Welcome to the Daybreak Friday. My name is Michael Schimke. I'm the CEO of Scafery. We run this session here every Friday to allow you, the audience, to ask questions about Data Vault 2.0, um, data mining, data-driven applications, cloud computing, MVP stuff, right? So all these uh, uh, fun questions here. Um, you, can, you can raise your questions using the chat here um, to raise a live question if you want. You can use the Q&A functionality in this client. You can also raise your hand and get, give your voice, really. And um, you can also use a form, which I show you the link for, um, after today's session, essentially, so you can um, upload the question there. Gives me some time to prepare some slides, essentially, um, which I have today uh, as well, uh, essentially. If we receive multiple questions, I would be cherry picking. Um, typically, we have a backlog and um, of a few questions, so it's it's not um, impossible that you get your question that you submit today um, answered next week or in two weeks from now. I believe we have two or three more questions um, in the in the pool at the moment. So um, yeah, so submit your questions, essentially. Um, should be time boxed, so the answer should be time boxed. So allows me. The best question is if it, if the answer would be in t ten minutes roughly, right? All right. And if there would be no questions at all, if the backlog is empty, we talk about the cluster here. Haven't done this for a while, so um, which is a good sign. You have enough questions. So let's let's jump directly into the today's question. So this one is about modeling. Come on, modeling. Um, sorry, sorry. This one is about modeling address data. And uh, let, yeah, let, just me, let me read this here quickly. So my team decided to model address data in one single hub. In our business area, customers have many types of addresses and very often all of them point to the same uh, physical address. Regarding ISO and some EU regulations, business key of such hub will be as follow. And then a lot of um, attribute, which you would typically um, um, associate with descriptive data, right? Um, an address name, uh, a postal code, tone name, and so on. Those are typical, uh, typically um, descriptive data for a customer, an employee, or some other stuff. So, um, but they decide to use this, these attributes here as the business key in the hub, essentially. Mm -hmm. It's obvious that every single address will have some attributes filled up while some stay empty. So, yeah, okay, let's, let's talk about this. My teammates opted for a rule to replace all null attributes with a minus two before loading business keys to a hub. Um, so they use the zero key concept, which we train in the um, DVA bootcamp, essentially. Such value replacement will ease hub loading as there will be no need to handle nulls in not exist condition. Okay, yeah, should be fine. So I'm not totally sure what the not exist here means, but I, I guess for the loading pattern. Uh, what's your opinion about replacing null with minus two in composite keys? And as a general question, what do you think about the idea of modeling address data as a single hub? Does this model seem to be fine, or uh, do you strongly discourage it? So first of all, so let's talk about the minus two here. So we, we do have two zero keys in the hub, where we use essentially the, the, um, the so where we use some, let's say, some business key, and then hash it, and then um, have some hash value, which means you can either hash minus one, minus two, and that leads to some hash value. And those are the zero keys. What I personally prefer, and what we typically do at Scafery is, instead of hashing minus one, minus two, we use a fixed hash value. All zeros for the uh, default or for the optional case, and the all Fs for the failure case, erroneous case. Because it's easier to apply in business logic and so on. So it's, it's and, and when you look at data, you can quickly find those zero keys. I mean, the zero key of, uh, or the hash key of minus one and minus two looks like the other hash keys, to be honest. But you can quickly find if a hash key is all zeros or all Fs. And they are the extreme values, right, of the whole, um, of the um, uh, space of the hash value, right? They can only go from zero to nine and A to F. So zero and F are the extreme values. So that's what I prefer. So I don't, so, and, and then if you use all zeros and all Fs, you can use any business key um, for the now values inside the hub. That's nice because then I can define uh, what I want to see in my unknown member in dimension or the erroneous member in my dimension, those business keys that I want to see, I'm setting in the hub because then naturally it will lead to the unknown member I, with the hash key of all zeros, the business key I defined in the hub for the all zero case and the descriptive attribute of the ghost record that leads to the, uh, to the unknown member and same pattern for the Aaron's member just with the other hash key. So that's the basic idea. So I'm not using, to be honest, I'm not using the, the, the replacement of the null values on the business key in the hub that much. 
The other thing is, I'm trying also to, I'm trying to avoid hub scenarios where some columns are null sometimes, and, and in other cases not. So we have this, uh, we have these um, partial definitions of uh, um, business keys or not. That 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 that's typically an indicator of overloaded hubs, which we want to avoid because that's that has some other issues with granularities and so on. So we want to avoid overloading hubs essentially, having different business objects inside the hub. That's the that's the issue. And for me, that sounds to some extent sounds like an overloaded uh, issue here as well. When when I look at the data again, let me just go back. So you, I mean, it's. Um, yeah, so for example, you have, yeah, that's actually the case. So you have a street name, and, and conflicting to that, you have an address line. So I believe if you have, uh, looking at your business key here, it's either street name, building number, building name, room floor, postal code, or it's the, instead of you use the address line instead of this data here, at least for this here. That's what my assumption is. I'm not sure on that one because, because I don't know your data. But that's why, what my assumption is. So you always have some null values here, as you just said, some null values here or here. And that's, yeah, I'm not sure. The, the question is, if you're not dealing with two different granularities here, because there could be on the same address, there could be multiple buildings, right, or different rooms. So you, you're dealing with different granularities here, right? One, there, there's many rooms in one building on the same street, on the same address, that kind of stuff, right? So th there's different granularities here that you're mixing. So it looks like, for me, like an overloading problem again, which I would avoid because if you, we have this recommendation in the, in the, in the bootcamp not to, over, uh, not to load different business keys that identify different business objects at different granularities and different semantic meanings into the same hub. That's number one. So let's say, um, but let's say this is not an overloading problem. It's just, so all the granularities are all the same. In this case, I would still try to avoid using these descriptive data here as a, um, as a business key. Um, I would check if you have something better, maybe a surrogate key for the address or some address ID, which I would prefer. Then the next question is, do you really need to ha have a hub for the address? Or could you just attach the address? I'm not sure where the data comes from now. Um, could you attach the address data to the to the actual business ob object, uh, to the hub customer, hub store, and so on. Could also be an option. Without, though, without adding any um, conditional logic, right? You can't make a decision, hey, is this address, if this address relates to a customer, then add, it, then add it to the satellite in the customer hub. That's not going to work. So that might work if you have different tables, customer table and so on, where these attributes come from. Then we'll just attach it to the customer hub, to be honest. Um, another option could be, that you use a, uh, for the uh, addresses, you use a reference table. Could also simplify things a bit. Yeah, again, if you have a key, it would be nice. I wonder how we deal with this otherwise. Um, you need some code, essentially, and this code must be also in your data describing your customers, essentially. That's the, that's the issue. So I'm not sure on the data. But let's say that's the best option. So all everything I said makes no sense for you, right? Um, in this case, and we had this case once uh, or, or twice, uh, there are some cases to identify people, for example, sometimes complicated. Um, how do you identify a person? It could be based on a passport ID or a um, state ID or a driver license or an email address or an alias name and so on, right? Uh, Mike from Hanover, that kind of stuff. So, um, so there's many different options for a business key. Too many. You can't even define the number of, of uh, structures for a business key. What about this? Um, so instead of using a relational hub, why don't you just use a JSON-based hub? A JSON-based business key, I said. So uh, co encode this as a JSON document, only use the keys that you have for the address, and then hash the string, the, the JSON object, the JSON string. The only thing you have to make sure is, regarding duplicates, um, that you always hash it in the right order. Right, uh, you order it by the key name essentially. Um, yeah, and, and essentially, uh, like the, the JSON structure, you would order by the key name. So to make sure you don't get duplicate hash values for the same address, that might be an interesting option, uh, especially if you if if it's if it's even more complicated than this one here. 
Um, yeah, so I would, I would try to avoid the overloading, but again, you have, you have, I believe you have a granularity problem. You have different rooms at the same address, multiple rooms at the same address. That seems to be a problem, but if not, maybe JSON encoding might be an interesting option. Um, yeah, that's what I would most probably do. Um, yeah, if, if, that's all the pr if you can't do JSON, yeah, you could, you could stick. To, so if, if there's no other option works, right? So I'm, I'm, the thing is this, I would, this is my, most probably my least option I would go for. I would go for other options first. Try to add the address to a satellite, as a script data. Um, if you can avoid conditional logic. Um, if you use a, um, I'm not sure what this not exist here means. Let me just double check if you're writing something. Yeah, so there's some comments here on the chat uh, regarding the address. Yeah, I mean, the address makes sense as a business object uh, in some industries. And uh, it's right if you're, if you're in a postal office or something, or insurance sometimes as well, government. Then the address makes sense for the, um, for the, uh, to identify that as a, a, the address as a business object. So I, I get, I, I go along with that. Um, and the not, ah, okay, the not exist comes from a load pattern. Okay, yeah, got it. So yeah. Um, yeah, you still have the null values. What I, the thing is this, because you're, you're replacing the business key, the null business key minus two, by minus two, you're making it more complicated to deliver dimensions downstream because the minus two will show up in the dimension as well, right? And you want to avoid that. So you have to fill it out again downstream. So I would rather prefer two things. Define the hash key as a fixed value, all zeros, all Fs. Don't hash minus one, minus two. Many advantages, uh, not just here. Um, and then just use an empty string for the, uh, instead of a null value for the uh, empty uh, parts, essentially. Would solve it as well. But again, my preference would be the JSON string. As in, in what you write here as well um, for the, um, uh, Michael, what you write here uh, for the JSON, that's what I would prefer as well. Because then I can, again, produce my dimension. I use the JSON functionality to extract the elements I need for my dimension later, right? So just from JSON string with the JSON um, uh, functionalities. So that's, that would be my preference, essentially. But again, make sure you avoid duplicates when you hash the JSON string. It must be in the right, always in the same order, ordered by the key, essentially. That's the idea. All right, yeah, so that, those are my thoughts. On, uh, I, have, I have no clear answer, sorry for that. that those are my thoughts, essentially, on this uh, address. What you want to avoid and what you, what you have to um, uh, consider, essentially. Um, sorry for no having cl no clear answer today. <laughs> okay, if you have a question like this, good qu good question though. Uh, it's, it's not a bad question. Um, use this form here, as, uh, which you find at the URL here, sfr.ee/dvfriday. That's where you can submit a question like this. Upload a picture if you want, um, and then uh, send it off, and it will end up on my my backlog essentially easily. And also check out scalefree.2/webinars, where we also um, um, uh, yeah publish webinars on. Web, uh, on, on Westscape and on DBT at the moment, tool, tool webinars um, yeah, from, from tool experts at Scalefree. And if you can't wait for the question to be answered until next Friday, or if you're on a backlog and you're still waiting for it, um, you can also submit a question to the uh, Data Innovators Exchange, which is a forum style community where we at Scalefree, but also at Ignition Data, we jump on your question and answer it. So there's a little competition going on who's, the, who's answering the fastest or the most questions. So that's, um, yeah, go for it. And yeah, so one more comment from Sandra here. In SAP, different objects, customer, vendor, they share the same address number. Yeah, and then you have an address number, then you have a better business key. So go for the address number as a business key in SAP and use the street names and so on as descriptive attributes in a satellite attached to the address hub. But that's missing for this, uh, for this case, I believe. Oh, and uh, now no, you get some more information here. So we decided to put address data into a single hub to deduplicate data, not to store same addresses many times in satellite. Honestly, I don't, uh, that doesn't really matter. So uh, keep it in the satellite. And then, um, you have, yeah, you have, if that's the reason, I would just keep it in the satellite and deal with that later downstream in the business world using same as links or just um, um, reducing data. Because you make it more complicated at the moment than having the duplicated data in your descriptive data in your satellite, in my opinion. So the satellite would make it easier to process the data. Um, so I would recommend move it into a satellite, the address data, the, the, the descriptive data. So, and 
Daydreaming is coming up. So on September 23, next month, well, seriously, next month, uh, less than 30 days, 23 days actually, um, the, our next conference coming up. Um, there are seats available, so check out, um, yeah, get your ticket essentially on this link. Uh, yeah, scalefree, uh, scalefree.ee slash DDL 2024, or use this, um, uh, this code here essentially um, to, um, yeah, to sign up for, for a conference. It's a real, real conference in Hanover, so we can shake hands. So, okay, cool. So, um, yeah, would be nice to see you there, and enjoy your weekends, and see you hopefully next Friday. Thank you, guys.